Welcome to the Weights and Measures Primer. My name is Ross Anderson. The Verification Scale Division E Task Group was formed in response to my 2019 NCWM proposal. That proposal addressed the confusion regarding D and E when enforcing the Scales Code. I discovered there was no parallel confusion in R76 on which the Scales Code was based. Handbook 44 is confusing because things were changed and things were lost when R76 was translated into the Handbook 44 Scales Code. This video is an attempt to explore the Verification Scale Division E. If we understand E, it should become clear why the recommendations are important. My proposal contained changes relating to error in verification. Many failed to see the connection of this part of the proposal to weighing instruments. I may not have explained it well. To understand E, we must understand its connection to test quantities, error, and tolerances in verification. Here are the critical parts of the definitions of error in Handbook 44. Tolerance is simply a limit to the error. We measure errors in excess deficiency by comparing the actual value to the nominal value. We measure the errors of over-registration, under-registration by comparing the indications to the should-be value. Either of these two approaches to error is equally valid. They are mirror images of each other. The choice is one of convention, so that we in the community agree to express errors in the same way. Let's try to visualize this. Here is an analog instrument scale in black that begins at zero. The values on this scale are nominal quantities when measuring errors in excess deficiency and indicated quantities when measuring errors of over under registration. So where are the actual and should be quantities? They can't be on this scale since that would mean we are verifying the instrument against itself. Not a good idea. To verify this instrument, we use an analog scale beginning at the same zero. Indulge me, and let's refer to this as the verification scale, because it's the reference we use to verify conformance with metrological or accuracy requirements. The values on this scale are actual quantities when measuring errors in excess deficiency and should be quantities when measuring errors of over under registration. In either case, this is the test quantity. In a test, we look for corresponding values, so we have one point on each scale, but each of these points has two names. In OIML, it gets even worse, as they refer to values on the verification scale as actual quantities, but also reference quantities, true quantities, and conventional true quantities. I like this last name, since for each test, we have a convention to use a specified reference standard and a designated test procedure. However you arrive at the value on the verification scale, it is from a measurement that has some degree of uncertainty. Under the convention, the uncertainty is accepted as small enough for the intended purpose. Let's agree to call the value on the instrument scale the indicated value and the value on the verification scale the actual value. I will refer to them as QI for indicated value corresponding to QA for actual value. One point with a specific name on each scale. Going back to the definitions of error, I propose we should revise them by adding some new text making error mathematical. This is slightly revised from the 2019 proposal. For errors in excess deficiency, I propose adding the term error of delivery defined as actual value minus instrument indication. For errors in over under registration, adding the term error of indication defined as instrument indication minus actual value. The error is the difference between the values QI and QA in the model. If we treat this as a mathematical value, the difference is just a number. But what if we want to visualize error? Zooming in, there are corresponding values QI and QA on both scales. We find the corresponding intervals are not the same size. So which is the error? 
We visualize error on the interval between QI and QA on the verification scale for several reasons. First, we may find that the verification scale and the instrument scale have different units and or different division sizes. Like the prover in cubic inches and the fuel dispenser in 0.001 gallon. Second, and most important, referring to error using the indications of the instrument is akin to verifying the instrument against itself. Let me explain. Adjustments must be made to correct the indication. If we adjust the indication of 10 downward by 1D, we overcorrect. The Ds are larger than declared. We need to adjust 1E downward. Mathematically, 1E is 0.90909D. You'll also see that the error is 10% or 1E in 10E. The key is to understand that the changing size of all the Ds is what causes error in the first place. For this instrument scale, an indication of 10 corresponds to an actual of 9. Notice the actual scale did not move. If we adjust the indication up 1D, we undercorrect. The Ds are smaller than declared. We need to adjust up 1E, which is 1.111D. The error is still 10%, or 1E in 10E. This emphasizes that trying to use instrument divisions D to measure or express error is technically wrong. Error is expressed in terms of the actual values measured on the verification scale. Thus far, both actual quantity and error are measured on the verification scale. We also use this scale to visualize tolerance. Tolerances are prescribed in the codes either as a percentage of test quantity or in steps. By my count in Handbook 44, this is 21 codes in percent and 15 codes in steps. We need to grasp that both approaches address relative error and accomplish the same thing. In this graphic, the solid line shows the 0.5% tolerance for a fuel dispenser. The dashed line shows uniform steps of 0.025 gallon for each 5 gallon. They both describe 0.5% relative accuracy or 1E per 200E. This assumes that the instrument error will not invade the spaces under the step risers. The instrument must maintain 0.5% accuracy at all deliveries following the solid line. It does this by ensuring the scale divisions D are uniform in size pursuant to general code GS523. This is a common way to graph error. Both the X and Y scale in this graphic are from the verification scale. The 20 gallons of test quantity are condensed on the X scale and the tolerances are expanded on the Y scale. This brings us to the connection to the verification scale division E, which can be thought of in two ways. We can view E as the resolution of the error. At 5 gallon, we resolve to 0.005 gallon on the black vertical scale or to 1 cubic inch on the blue scale. This means either 5 or 6 divisions E of tolerance. Remember that error is normally rounded, half up, half down. This rounding means you might round down and pass an instrument with an error just outside the tolerance. When we measure the error, we instinctively recognize that the error should be resolved finer than the tolerance. The thought of using a prover resolution of 6 cubic inches equal to the tolerance is clearly unacceptable. Here are some instruments where we express E as resolution of error and prescribe tolerance in percentage. The percent tolerance comes from the handbook code in yellow. The official selects the test quantity in the verification scale division E in the choice of the reference in green. From these three values, the official can derive in blue the tolerance and the number of divisions of maintenance tolerance, both relating to E. In the last column, you don't see any case with less than five divisions E of tolerance. The chosen resolution comes down largely from past practice and some common sense. There is measurement science involved. 
resolving error to at least one-fifth of the maintenance tolerance limits rounding in the error determination to a max of about 10% of the tolerance. I can add another derived column comparing the tolerance to D. Instrument divisions in D can range from much smaller than E to much larger than E. This emphasizes that the instrument resolution D is not related to the accuracy, and that's another reason we measure error and tolerance in E on the independent verification scale. We alternatively can view E as the size of the tolerance step, an exact value. Here the step is 1 E or 0 0.025 gallon per 5 gallons. But what about the resolution of the error? For the dispenser at 5 gallons, getting to one-fifth of the maintenance tolerance requires resolution no larger than 0 0.005 gallon or 1 cubic inch. What about weighing instruments? This table shows step tolerances for R76 class 2. The examples correspond to the four kinds of instruments in the first column. Those with an auxiliary indicating device where E is greater than D, those without it where E equals D, weight classifiers where E is usually less than D, and balances that have no D. The maintenance tolerance is specified in steps of 1, 2, or 3 E in the code. The value of the verification scale division E, the step, is specified by the manufacturer in orange. The official chooses the test quantity in green. We need one additional derived column to allow us to find the tolerance and percent tolerance. This column is M, which R76 defines as test load divided by E. I've included the maximum value for test load in the table for each step. R76 does not use the letter N here, since N is reserved for classification and the unique value, capacity, divided by E. In the previous table, the official chose E to resolve the error to at least one-fifth of the maintenance tolerance. Here, the manufacturer picks E to define the tolerance. The official must still measure error to 0.2 E or better to keep rounding error small, as with the other instruments. The 0.2 E resolution results in a minimum of 5, 10, and 15 divisions of error under R76. The 0.2 E resolution is formally stated in the R76 test procedure, but this got lost in translation to Handbook 44. I can again add another column comparing tolerance to D. This emphasizes the lack of a connection between D and accuracy. With a balance, you can't even make any comparison between D and E. Handbook 44 intended to make three changes from R76 regarding tolerance. You will find more on these in my videos explaining the task group recommendations. A fourth step was added to class 3 over 4000 E. For instruments within between 4001 and 6667, the error cannot exceed the 0.075% at n equal 4,000, since it is area under a step riser. We see very few approved instruments with n over 6,667. The class 3L structure has a larger number of proportional steps. The effective tolerance is 0.2% of test load at the top of each step. But also notice that the rounding of the error measurement never exceeds 10% of the fifth tolerance step. When comparing tolerance to E, we do not need to resolve to 0.2 E since we have sufficient resolution to keep the rounding error small. The class 4 structure for highway weight enforcement also has a fourth step like class 3 and doubles the tolerances. The approved instruments have N between 400 and 1200 with either 6 or 10 divisions of tolerance. Like class 3L, the resolution of E is sufficient to keep the rounding error small. I considered that the authors of the scales code intended E to be both the tolerance step and the resolution of the error, always rounding to the nearest one E of error. I reject that because of class 3L. This graph shows a 200,000 by 20 pound class 3L superimposed over a 200,000 pound by 200 pound class 3. 
These instruments should be equivalent in performance and accurate to 0.2% despite the different size steps. The Class 3 needs to be tested at 500E or 100K. The plus tolerance for Class 3 is the dark blue line and for Class 3L the light blue. Notice the red line showing the 100 pound rounding of the error for Class 3 and compare that to the orange line showing the 10 pound rounding of the error for Class 3L. Did the authors really intend that an error of 300 pounds at 100K passes for Class 3? but an error of 211 pound fails class 3L? If you follow the one-fifth rule for class 3 as NTEP and R76 do, you would resolve errors on both instruments to 20 pound with a rounding error of 10 pound. The rounding error can become even larger for weight classifiers because they round up. Based on everything thus far, I've derived four rules for metrological verification. One, the indicated value QI refers to a value on the instrument scale used in a test. QI must be an analog point or a digital value resolved to at least one-fifth of the maintenance tolerance. Two, the test quantity is always referring to the actual quantity QA on the verification scale corresponding to QI on the instrument scale. QA must be an analog point or a digital value resolved to at least one-fifth of the maintenance tolerance. 3. Error is the difference between QI and QA, either mathematically or visually on the verification scale. The resulting error is resolved to at least one-fifth of the maintenance tolerance because of rules 1 and 2. And 4. Tolerance is computed using the actual quantity QA and the algorithm prescribed in the legal code. If rounded, it is rounded to the resolution of QA in step 2. Notice items 2 through 4 are expressed on the verification scale. The test quantity and the error are measured. Tolerance is computed. The E's on the verification scale are separate from and independent of the D's on the instrument scale. This helps us better understand the scale's code. The reference standards with their scale divisions E are used in verification of metrological or accuracy requirements. In the test, E's are used to express test quantities, errors, and tolerances. But when the official goes on to test another instrument, the E's go with them. All that's left for commerce are the D's in the indication of the instrument. There are plenty of technical requirements or design specifications relating to D. These are not accuracy-related, but function-related. Here are a few examples of those specifications most referring to D and maybe one notable exception to E. GS522C refers to rounding digital values to D. GS523 requires that both analog and digital divisions be uniform in size. You can't skip divisions and you can't have larger divisions balancing smaller divisions. TN7 discrimination requirements apply to the scale division D. This in part ensures the scale divisions D are uniform in size, but also ensures the divisions D are meaningfully different and do not overly blur together. S121 requires values expressed for gross, tear, and net in commerce be expressed to the same minimum division D. S213 addresses zero tracking, which may not operate outside a load window specified in D. This test functionality, not accuracy. S17B requires that digital instruments not indicate above capacity plus 9D. But this may be the exception, and it should be 9E consistent with R76. The E here is the value marked by the manufacturer for classification and not an actual test weight on the verification scale. Also remember that E may not equal D. I can't emphasize enough that the verification scale is separate from and independent of the instrument scale. The scales code must be clear. Is it referring to E as in classification and E as the actual weight on the verification scale in testing? Or is it referring to D and the operation of the instrument scale?
The Scales Code translation adopted back in 1984 blurred the distinction in some important cases and completely reversed the meaning in others, most notably expressing test loads and tolerances in Table 6 in D instead of E. The task group is making recommendations to resolve these translation errors and ensure the correct meanings are conveyed. If we get this right and explain it as I'm trying to do here, I believe the confusion enforcing the scales code will disappear. I made three more extensive videos to explain the issues more thoroughly and explained how the task group recommendation corrects each of the translation errors. I do hope you will view these videos as you consider the task group recommendations. Thank you for watching.